Manoj sir, over to you. Thank you, Gitandar. Very good afternoon to everybody. Uh, we are here today just to have a panel discussion on the changes in HVAC requirements in commercial spaces and establishment post COVID-19. It is very much essential that in the light of this COVID-19, life has become a great challenge and everywhere it is under lockdown condition and this lockdown condition, of course, we do not know when it will be over because since till today we have not got any medicine or any vaccine, nothing has come out and we expect that it will not be coming out within the next six to eight years, uh, eight months. So we, in, under these circumstances, we can't keep everything under lockdown and our main idea is we will have to try or we will have to practice ourselves to live with COVID-19. So what are the responsibilities we are Contemplating on this, we will have the today's technical discussion and we have a lot of experts here with us who can who will enlighten the do's, don't do's and what shall be done for this COVID-19 post. And we will concentrate our discussion mainly on the commercial spaces, means office, shopping malls, other establishment, hospitals, hotels, and all. First, let me tell I am Manoj Chakraborty. I am a presidential member of uh, ISHRE, and I am the president of uh, ASHRAE East India chapter. We have with us uh, Mr. Uh, Richie Mittal. He is the national president of ISHRAE, and he is a, a founder president of India Indoor Environmental Quality Society India chapters and he is the uh, Ashley India ex president also and now he is holding the key position in the uh, well. And next person is Mr. Pradeep Sureka. Mr. Pradeep Sureka is uh, basically a is a guy or, or gentleman who don't need any introduction. Uh, he is the vice president still of uh, Indian Chamber of Commerce and he is the founder president of Kredai and he is the managing director of Shuraka Properties. And next we have with us Amitabh Sur. He is the national president elect of Ishre and he is the, another gentleman of well, with having a quiet experience and director of Aircon India Private Limited. Then we have one gentleman, Mr. Shailesh Nigam. He is the general manager of one of the global premier manufacturing company, Daikin. And he is with us, who will be enlightening us about our requirements today. And we have Dr. Jyotinmay Mathur and Dr. Mathur is our task force, COVID task force members and he is the chair of research in ISHRE and he is a professor of MINT uh, Jaipur. We have Mr. Pratik Dattarai, he is a chief engineer of l &T and having a wide experience in designing and execution of big and small, medium and critical projects of national interest. Mainly he is the executor of, of many HVAC big, small and critical projects. And in the meantime, our ISHRE had already made a task force on these burning issues of COVID-19 and today, the panelists, out of these all panelists, there are task force members, Vicky Mittal, Mr. Dr. Jyotin Mahamathur, Mr. Amitabh Basur, these three are the COVID task force members of ISHRE. And 
they will also be enlightening us about the various recommendation which has come out and which has subsequently accepted by government of india and many departments of government of india like cpw mes and all so with this little bit of introduction of all these uh, stalwarts of panel panelists i will now request mr richie mitchell to speak a few word about ishre over to richie thank you manoj da uh, first of all thank you uh, good evening and thank you india chamber of commerce and mr sreka for giving us an opportunity to ishre to speak on uh, air conditioning ventilation at workplaces hospital clinic to the webinar i would like to thank the kushre covid task force set up by ishre technical committee with ishre chairs of technical groups for preparing this document along with ishre hq an it committee which has worked more than 5 to 6 hours every day since it was launched on 13th of april the brief about ishre the indian society of heating refrigerating and air conditioning engineers was founded in 1981 at new delhi by a group of eminent hvac and r professionals ishre today has a 30000 hvac and r professional and student members ishre operates from over 43 chapters and chapter sub chapters spread all over india with hq in delhi in our endeavor to disseminate knowledge ishre is not stopping while fighting with covid and have already started using digital platform to reach and connect with the members so this is one of the platform that we are using since beginning at of the lockdown ishre is conducting around 8 to 10 webinars for our members to freshen up the knowledge at their comfort of their home ishre is led by a team of elected officers who are members of the society working on a voluntary basis and collectively called board of governors so gentlemen whoever from ishre we you see here they are all volunteers including me uh, as a board of governor i'll just quickly run through the ishre's objective objectives are advancement of art and sciences of heating ventilation refrigerating and air conditioning engineers and related services continuing education of members and other interested persons in the said sciences through lectures workshops product presentation publication expositions and now through webinars because that has become very popular and that is the only way a media by which we could reach career guidance and financial assistance to students of said sciences encouragement of scientific research uh, i would like to thank each one of you to participate in this digital platform and of the panel and uh, we we have uh, you know this document is now available for free download on ishre website and uh, would request you all to please join ishre to participate in the journey of ishre to disseminate knowledge to all and as manojda has already mentioned this uh, document ishre has produced in a record time with uh, so much time be spent by all individual volunteers this document has been accepted by cpwd mes and uh, today I, i would like to th thank dr jyotirame mathur that aict has put it on their website so thank you to dr jyotirame and the whole team for this with this thank you manojda over to you thank you thank you richi and uh, now i will request mr pradeep shurega to speak a few word about icc and ishre icc combination over to mr surekar uh, thank you manojda <clears throat> uh, good evening everybody good evening to my fellow panelists uh, it's always a pleasure for indian chamber to associate with ishre ashre we i had the opportunity of launching the signing the mou along with manoj da and richi in bhubaneswar i remember a few days few months back but uh, probably that uh, particular period was entirely different and uh, i would come straight to the subject of pre covid and post covid pre covid we were talking about dense spaces how do we air condition dense spaces how do we uh, cool or heat dense spaces now we're going to talk about how we're going to be efficiently cooling or heating spaces which are not going to be so dense whether commercial spaces and and i'm sure with indian chamber of commerce which is one of the oldest chambers in india and uh, headquartered in calcutta and we have a long term relationship with ishre and we will together work on this particular platform this changing times this unknown changing times and it requires i'm very happy that they've already worked with the government and presented a paper i had the opportunity to see this paper recently 
and uh, but i think that's only a beginning we will need to understand how this industry how the commercial spaces evolve how the psychology how people whether it's going to be work from home shop from home stay at home or are people going to come back into the public places maybe not here not this this year maybe next year we have to be prepared for the best so i'm sure together with indian chamber and ishray and ashray we can look at the problems of the industry and give them solutions as we go along thank you manoj over to you thank you mr sureka for your guidance and very good uh, presentation or first uh, start we will now start straight away go to our panel topics and we will since we have got a lot of experts within our in our panel so we will take their view and we will expect that they are going to enlighten everybody who are viewing this program and uh, first uh, i will ask our uh, national president mr richi mittal who seems to be one of the expert designer and who was who is who was the founder president of indoor environmental quality in india and uh, mr mittal as a designer and expert what changes do you anticipate in the existing uh, commercial spaces to adhere to the norms of ieq in the post covid 19 and to make the recommendation to full to adhere to the recommendation of ishray what they have mentioned uh, thank you manojda thank you for this yeah. question and uh, Uh, just to share that you know ishray has uh, indoor environmental quality standard uh, which has been revised in 2019 and it is available at ishray website so you know uh, now your question is uh, what do you anticipate sir what i anticipate you see earlier you know we were only talking about air quality pertaining to you know pm 2.5 pm 10 and co2 which unfortunately i, I would say that you know lot of industries uh, uh, during when the pollution level were high they were shutting down the fresh air to stop the ingress of pm 2.5 and 10 but now the you need lot of fresh air actually you know post covid you need lot of fresh air you need ventilation you need air changes so so forget about co2 now we are talking of covid as a virus which is coming into the building so one has to be very seriously look and i'm sure everybody is today talking about it increasing the fresh air we always talked about it it in our iq standard what is the minimum air quantity which is required for fresh air to maintain co2 but now what is recommended that uh, in uh, the, some other studies they are saying maximum fresh air quantity now maximum could be 100% fresh air but that is a limitation that is a challenge to have it so we can have a recirculation units with a lot of fresh air inducted you know earlier you had say x amount so you can increase to i don't want to put a number to any number because there is no study which has come which has given any firm number but to protect or to as a precaution i would say that we increase the maximum fresh air into the system and also we have to maintain a thermal comfort in that which iq standard spoke about it so iq always said that you know you can go to a high temperature with fans and clothing so i think that standard may be relooked at and may be followed very rigorously so that you know covid has uh, been taught us that you know we what a lot of studies which has come out is always saying that uh, fresh air or the ventilation is a very important factor to prevent uh, the I mean, to prevent the you know mitigation of uh, covid into the area also you know we talk about proper filtration in hus and uh, also when a balancing of uh, fresh air and exhaust air within the building so so what i i suggest that there are a lot of changes which may be there pertaining to fresh air i would say and hygiene and maintenance which one has to look at and i would recommend everybody to please uh, use our iq standard follow it rigorously and increase uh, more fresh air into the system thank you manojda over to you thank you that means richi what you are telling that ventilation the need of ventilation that means uh, fresh air uh, induction of more and more fresh air that is definitely going to help with the improving of the indoor air quality because dilution of the pollutants which is there indoor will be definitely go that means covid 19 has become a very good learning session for us earlier the way you have told that, that there are lot many user 
who are stopping the uh, fresh air induction even in their premises just uh, to reduce the heat loads and all these things. That practice they will have to leave now, isn't it? So it's a very good thing, Richie, you are uh, hinted the right point. And we will have to, since we know we will have to live with uh, COVID-19, so we will have to start practicing this thing. And whatever augmentation will be required, that augmentation we will have to do. Now, uh, in this regard, I will uh, put my attention to Mr. Pradeep Sureka. One question that what are the expected changes in the lines of the post-COVID you were expecting in the HBAC system for the commercial spaces? Uh, as I was saying earlier, and uh, taking as a cue from what Richie is saying, that definitely uh, we have to uh, increase the fresh air. But again, you know, bringing in fresh air means a higher cost on the electricity bill. And as I, in my opening remarks said, that we are going going into a era of low density. We were, you know, were, earlier we were planning one person 100 square feet in an office office space now then we started planning one person in 60 square feet now probably we might go back to 125 or 150 square feet so you designers you engineers will have to come up with a balance of a design where fresh air electricity bill cooling and supporting i mean th these times are going to change even in my mall or whether in my office space there will be peak hours There'll be low peak hours, there'll be high peak hours. After one and a half years, I may be back to, you know, 200,000 people visiting my mall again. So I have to design to save my electricity bill today. Everybody is saying that this one year is a year of survival. It's a year of efficiency. How do I bring efficiency into my systems? If my mall is going to operate at 20%, how do I keep my electricity down? How do I keep my bills down? So I will need a solution on existing projects. How do I get these solutions in existing projects where already air conditioning systems are existing? And when we design new projects, how do we design? That tomorrow, if there is another COVID-21 or a COVID-22, right, right, right. how do we face that? So I think the world is going to be different. The world has got to change. Uh, you guys probably have to go back to your study books again with COVID-19 and take new degrees COVID-2021. 20, Thank you. That is true. I think you have hinted the right thing. But I, I wanted to tell the responsibility. Shureka sir, you can't deny one thing that, OK, whatever measures we can give, we whatever base design we can give so that the power consumption comes down, everything comes down. But the basis of design, adherence to the basis of design like what you have rightly pointed out that we may have to enhance that 125 square feet per person that adherence to those norms that has to be checked in and that has to be kept and strict we will have to monitor this thing very critically because then only we will able to face and practice ourselves to face against this COVID because no one can give guarantee if today COVID-19 goes after two years, it will not come back. So we will Agreed. have to, uh, we will have to definitely help you at the same time. You will help to, you will have to help the community by checking and implementing those things, things correctly and critically. I feel you will definitely agree with me. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you, Manoj. That, as I said, okay. that our systems which you design, whether in the existing, I need solutions on the existing, and I need solutions on the new designs, where I should be, I will have to have more diversity in my design. Yeah. Where if there is a low, low peak hour, I should be able to save power. When there is, I'm not saying change of exchange of air has to be there. There has to be a manual for higher maintenance. Okay, higher, okay. Yeah, that has to be there. That is true. So now the we have got a very good um, uh, area where we are talking about the fresh air, air and comforts and everything. For that, what I feel, I will now uh, ask uh, Dr. Mathur to answer the question that what about the what 
what is your recommendation and regarding the air distribution for cleanliness effective control of uh, virus and bacteria as well as our comfort and what is your recommendation that we should follow and that should be keeping in mind of post covid 19 do you anticipate any changes of the hvac system or the air distribution envisaged in the hvac system existing for after the or the post covid 19 Yatin Yeah. Uh, thank you, Manoj. Yeah. Uh, I would say, uh, yes, definitely. Surika Saab already uh, said this, that there is going to be definitely a change in the way we look at our systems and buildings as such. So first of all, greater flexibility and greater modularity has to be built in in the system. Mm -hmm. But especially as far as the design aspects are concerned, uh, there are Two, three things which need to be emphasized now uh, so that our buildings are ready to uh, face the pandemic cha related challenges so one is uh, the order of filtration that we have in our buildings right now uh, is relatively less as compared to what it should be uh, that is for the simple reason that uh, many people uh, argue for is that more is heavier is the filtration more is the pressure drop and therefore more powerful is the fan that i need to use uh, to pump the air in my building which results into increased energy consumption but we need to definitely uh, think about this and uh, and uh, see the role of filtration in this what happens is even this covid virus uh, this finds pm 2.5 and pm 10 as a very good substrate to travel from one place to another place through our hvac systems so if we have a good filtration in our systems, this possibility is reduced to some extent, to a significant extent rather. Uh, number two, uh, right now, uh, techniques like uh, UVGI, use of UVGI, ultraviolet uh, germicidal radiation, and uh, similar things is not very common, which I think now after this uh, pandemic will change the practice and more and more buildings will start adopting UVGI as a uh, air treatment uh, method. Number three, most importantly, what I see is we will, in a way, in a way, uh, start seeing the air. When I say this, I mean air, uh, seeing the air, meaning airflow pattern and airflow paths will be or will have to be visualized by the designers. Right now, what we have is we have a kind of mixed uh, air system in which somehow we bring air to the space and that air mixes normally now i'm not saying in every project but in many projects i've seen it normally gets mixed with the uh, existing air and then some part of that goes back through the plenum as my return so this way of looking at the air distribution will have to be changed and we will have to see this visualize the streamlines and make sure that in this streamline one single streamline doesn't cross many occupants meaning reducing the possibility of any infection carried by one person being transmitted to the other person will be reduced if my streamlines are not crossing many occupants. So that way airflow has to be seen and uh, ensured in uh, my building. So these are few changes that will come. But in addition, we will have to realize that the life of COVID virus is reducing significantly as my temperature rises, whether it is airborne or the life on surface, the life reduces as the temperature increases. Again, I would not go by the numbers because they are given in the Israel document so people can refer that but that definitely says that higher set point is going to help us by uh, reduce uh, because life of this virus if at all it is present in air will be reduced so use higher set point have your thermostat at around 27 or something or even higher if you can sustain that with little bit of air velocity so if a fan is running people are found to be comfortable even at 29 30 degrees centigrade if humidity is not that big a challenge so uh, that is that kind of settings we will have to uh, look for and we have to change the practices in which air conditioning systems are used. As far as small uh, commercial offices are concerned, they probably may find a challenge in having more ventilation because many of them don't have operable windows or many of them don't have exhaust fans even. So they will have to find a way to fit an exhaust fan or they will have to find a way in which some part of the window can be made operate, operable uh, so that ventilation can be increased. 
Otherwise, the pr probability of the virus being circulated uh, inside increases and the possibility of exposure increases. That is a very good suggestion, uh, Dr. Mathur, you have told. But you mean to say that apart from filtration, that uh, air distribution for minimizing the turbulent zone, isn't it? Yes. We should minimize as um, the turbulent zone, we should try to make the airflow, if not 100% laminar, at least to the extent of linear, isn't it? Yeah, perfectly. Yeah. So, so that is our that should be our aim for to get rid of uh, uh, this COVID-19 to a great extent. I'm not going to tell it is the only solution. No, that is definitely give, will give a very good result. What you have told, that's fine. And my uh, next question will come to Amitav. This is so far the air distribution and other things are concerned. They have told. But uh, you know, uh, as a very experienced HVAC professional in all segments, all types of projects you have handled. Now, uh, now, what is your feeling for fabrication and the manufacturing of uh, the equipment or the product at site and getting the manpower are uh, also going to be a greatest challenge. How to overcome? this situation in the post-COVID-19. What do you feel? Thank you, Manoj Da. A very difficult and a tricky question, but I'll try and answer that. Uh, getting manpower to the site, that will be the most difficult and the daunting task for any contractor now in the given situation. And not only getting them back, you know, getting them back with discipline. We are talking of, uh, of them wearing proper PPE, taking, uh, you know, uh, maintaining social distance social and all distancing. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, Manoj, the how many sites we have seen where you know these uh, no, normal uh, protection equipments that we wear to uh, you know follow, uh, like helmets, safety shoes, and you know your safety belts and all those kind of things. You will see the labor force is reluctant to take them. You know, they they will say they definitely uh, say ki. And today we are expecting them to wear mask. We are expecting them to wear, you know, protective glasses and also uh, maybe gloves when they're working. So it will be definitely, you know, all round education that will be required to be given to them and which is a very, very difficult task to, because to communicate with them at that level and to impart something is not very easy. And leave apart that, I mean, we are talking of social distancing. How many times we have seen that a guy during the break goes to the smoking zone and takes a cigarette and somebody else comes and takes the light from him. So, you know, and so how do you control that? How, how do you impart those kind of educations to uh, labor? So it yeah. will be really difficult. And uh, but then we'll have to try. We'll have to keep on trying. We'll have to educate. We are trying to devise certain things. We will try to impart those things when we are bringing them back and sending them to the site because uh, you see their health is also an important thing for us because it's not only a human concern it's also a you know a productivity that is related to their health and it's it's a social cause also so we should not be ignoring anybody's health so we will try and impart as much as possible and let's see how much they can take but it's a very very difficult task that any contractor is going to face now coming to but the mechanization part, Manozda, it's a labor intensive uh, job, you know that. I mean, over years, I mean, it has been labor intensive. So we will try to mechanize it as much as possible with, uh, you know, maybe prefabricated ducts of, uh, and pre insulated ducts, pre insulated pipes are available today. And uh, so, you know, try and lab reduce the labor intensity at site. But nevertheless, labor will be required because for erection, you need labor. And, uh, you know, so, so that cannot be reduced. But what can be done, I, I suppose, is one area where you see you see a very dense uh, labor working is material handling at site. When people, when the riggers or the lifters and porters are lifting something, you know, they are all in groups and they are trying to lift something. So that will be a big challenge. And maybe we'll have to see how we can improve on material handling equipments at site, but that needs meticulous planning because 
moving at ground will be easier you know but when you go inside lifting on the stairs and all those kind of uh, uh, corridors and spaces it will be difficult but then we'll have to work around it and find out solutions where we can reduce the labor intensity and also maintain social distancing but it will be a daunting task i can tell you that well I, i'm sure it's a very 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 difficult task but even then i can cite one or two example where this thing was already existing if you go to work in tisco you will not be allowed to work or enter there with the proper uh, uh, helmet or proper safety facilities even if you go to um, go to volkswagen factory in pune they are also the same thing that means the yeah, people yeah. who absolutely. Manoj, the, uh, absolutely there are certain organizations who follow these norms very strictly is, and they implement question, the safety norms very strictly my, my, my there are penalties in that side if you do not do it yes yes my but question then how is many? you know there how, are how many no, no, there are not many it's, it's, if you take now, 100 sites probably you will find them in only 10 at the most i agree i i agree omitavo but my question is now the stage has come where how many or uh, we will try that stage is now going so we will have to vouch now we every one of us has to do it come what may we will have to do it that what i uh, right. what i mean to say uh, but You're what right. you have told what you have told i 100% do agree with you thank you sir so my next uh, question will be coming as an to pratik as an experienced designer you you please enlighten us why this recent guidelines issued by isre and accepted by government departments has emphasized on filtration temperature humidity control and humidity control of the space to prevent the spread of covid 19 you please explain us how all these things but shortly and briefly uh, thank you thank you manoj sir uh, thanks to ishri and uh, ashri and icc for organizing this very very relevant panel discussion i would like to briefly touch upon the points which you have asked which are which are very very pertinent because uh, we hvc engineers or people who deal with it uh, possibly these are known to us but it's very good it's extremely good that when i see that a large populace today because of this virus pandemic are they want to know what is the right temperature what is the filtration level what is the right humidity uh, at which we should operate the air conditioning system because they are concerned about their health uh, i will go one by one uh, let's take humidity uh, our human body is actually an extremely well designed and engineered machine it has got its own checks and balances own safety devices to take care and protect itself now if you see uh, this uh, uh, covid or any virus it finally it has to travel inside your body through the air path which is your mouth and your nose and if you see the whole surface till the air reaches our lungs the wind pipe the trachea and the inside of the nostrils everything has a protective mucous membrane which is a viscous substrate through which any particle has to pass and it acts as a primary filtration medium now what happens is the air which we are breathing is extremely dry then we use this mucus protection so 40% is a most optimum or a minimum humidity level at which our inside the body the mucus membrane is preserved and we don't end up with a dry throat so that's the reason why we talk of uh, humidity of not going less than 40%. We also have said in our uh, COVID guidelines, the upper limit of humidity, which is 70%. Uh, let's understand why the upper limit. If you only talk of this COVID virus, studies have shown that higher the humidity, better is the chance of this uh, virus getting deactivated. However, uh, today, covid is a really supreme but it doesn't mean that all the other pathogens like the bacteria and the fungus and molds and termites they are going for a summer vacation right so they are also very much there and studies show that above 70% rh the activity level the longevity and the negative effects of these pollutants are increased in a human body hence 
uh, Ishri has uh, recommended a uh, RH range of 40 to 70 percent. Now let's come to the temperature. You have talked about key uh, issues. You have talked about relative humidity, temperature, and the filtration. Now, again, studies have shown that the best temperature for the COVID virus to survive is actually 7 to 8 degrees C. And the moment it crosses above 24, 25, its longevity or time it's able to survive comes down. In fact, it, a study shows that beyond 56 it doesn't uh, survive. Now, you can't expect people to be at 56, but considering health, 24 to 30 is what has been recommended by Ishri. Now, I keep getting many questions from my friends that how can you say somebody is comfortable at 30? But while they agree to that, uh, let us uh, appreciate that comfort, human comfort, is not only a function of temperature and humidity. The clothing, the activity levels, and most importantly, the speed of air which is hitting us plays a very, very critical role. And uh, you know, when we enter a room and switch on a fan, we immediately get a comfort. So actually, studies have shown that if every 15 feet per minute increase in air circulation velocity actually gives us a feeling of comfort, which is one degree Fahrenheit, that's a roughly 0.5 degree centigrade lower temperature. So, so my suggestion to people who are uh, used to lower temperatures uh, would be switch on the fan along with the air conditioning machine. Trust me, uh, it will keep you comfort even at higher temperatures. It's not 30, but surely 26 or uh, 27 degrees C. And uh, it does, will improve your energy performance and it will increase the efficiency of the system as well. The third point you have talked about is uh, filtration. Uh, let's uh, appreciate this, uh, Dr. Mathur has already stretched on this. Uh, study shows that uh, cleanliness is related to spread of uh, any pathogen. I will not talk only a virus, any pathogen. Uh, generally, this aerosols, typically in the size of uh, in the size range of five microns to about seven eight microns, a micron is 10 to the power minus six meter. They act as a perfect carrier for microorganisms. So if you have a good efficient filtration system, it does helps us to arrest uh, these particles and thereby reducing the chance of uh, propagation uh, of the uh, of the virus. The commercial comfort air conditioning generally the filters what we use are much coarse and uh, to, if, you, if, you, if you look at the size of a coronavirus which is hardly some point one micrometer uh, the, the cleanliness can help you stop propagation to some extent unless you're using a HEPA filter but that's not practicable at least in the short run for commercial comfort air conditioning i would like to stress one more point here Study has, studies have shown that for COVID virus to be effective in affecting you, it needs to be present in certain level of minimum concentration. So here, the question of pressure comes into picture, which actually Mr. Pradeep Suleka and all of you, Mr. Richie Mittal, Manu Chakrut, you yourself have talked about. Force here acts as a fantastic tool for diluting the concentration of the virus which may otherwise build up. So, if you are starting the air conditioning system, first you ensure that you have flushed the uh, space well, and in your offices or commercial spaces, you see the systems are designed for fresh air. Okay, but due to power and all those issues, uh, we tend to compromise on that. So it's absolutely important that when we start the air conditioning system, we must ensure that adequate fresh air is available to the occupants. I think this is the basic logic why this temperature, filtration, and relative humidity guidelines has been issued. And uh, this document has really gained a lot of traction in the media and the people at large. Yes, yes uh, Yes, you told the, you have hit the right point, but only thing which I will come back afterwards, that is we are talking about filtration, filtration. But filtration, when we are talking, we are talking PM 2.5, carbon dioxide, PM 10, and all these things. But what about the other gases? Does it have any effect on the 
COVID-19 because we are taking fresh air and this fresh air is outside air. Outside air contains a lot of other gases like SOX, NOX and all these things. Whether SOX, NOX can uh, affect anything for the COVID-19 that we will discuss afterwards. Before uh, that, I want to switch over to uh, Shailesh. Okay. And uh, I want to tell Shailesh that uh, what changes, Shailesh, do you may see in the HBS equipment design or performance requirement in the post-COVID lockdown period? Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, and thanks to ICC and Ishre for this such a relevant topic. And good evening to all the listeners. Uh, actually, evaluating this topic, uh, saying post-COVID is uh, a bit, uh, you know, optimistic in today's scenario when we don't see a solution in uh, form of vaccination. In fact, we have to look for the solution during the outbreak itself. Uh, when we are talking of commercial spaces, today, we have already, you know, offices working uh, in third uh, extension of lockdown. Many of the offices have already started working. And we have to, you know, look at uh, upgrading those existing equipment. And it has, uh, you know, been uh, mentioned by all the almost you know, learned, uh, panelists that there is a requirement of uh, higher ventilation. As Pratik uh, very clearly mentioned that, you know, this uh, virus will move in the form of aerosol. So it is, uh, you know, required to flush away the virus and then you know uh, take it away so uh, the important thing is existing building we cannot have any uh, you know load upgradation within the existing buildings but definitely when we have the requirement of higher ventilation we will have to add treated fresh air units which can you know treat the fresh air itself, as Manojda very clearly, you know, raised this point, whether this outside air itself will be, you know, good enough when we mix it with the patient air. So we have to treat the fresh air itself when it is entering the conditioned space. And then that's how we have to increase the ventilation air by treating it and bringing it down to that uh, uh, required temperature of uh, 25 to 30 and maintaining, uh, maintaining that uh, humidity level. Uh, and uh, while we are working, you know, uh, during this outbreak and uh, we don't know the solution uh, in sight uh, in near future, maybe six, seven months or a year will go when we have to continue with this, we have to take immediate measures to, you know, upgrade this, up, uh, you know, uh, existing systems going forward. When we design the new systems, I don't see any, uh, you know, uh, major changes in the plant room equipment. But whenever, uh, you know, filtration requirement, whenever ventilation requirements are going to go up, then definitely there will be load on the plant rooms. And to take care of this COVID-19, uh, you know, coronavirus, we have to have measures like, as uh, Dr. Mathur mentioned, UVGI, uh, UV lamps. Uh, or uh, standalone, uh, you know, filtration units uh, within the uh, conditioned space. And moreover, when we are designing, we have to avoid using, you know, one common unit for different cabins instead of we have to use more uh, zonal units like cassettes or fan coil units instead of going for one uh, air handling units. And even when we have air handling units, it has to be mandatorily uh, be with, uh, you know, UV lamp or some other uh, device which can trap and kill the viruses there itself. So, uh, so far as equipment design is concerned, if we look at, you know, this is, uh, I'm talking about the large commercial spaces, even in some commercial spaces, room ACs are still in, uh, you know, uh, use. So even, uh, you know, uh, room ACs also the buyers going forward would be looking for a feature where uh, the virus can be trapped and, uh, you know, can be destroyed. So there are, I believe, the products already available uh, in uh, air cleaners, in uh, some uh, room ACs also, where the, uh, they claim that virus can be killed in their units. So those units, uh, you know, uh, should be more in use. So this is, uh, you know, going forward, definitely the ventilation requirement, along with, you know, uh, the mitigation of this virus has to be uh, there in demand. performance mainly in the uh, low side means uh, 
airside equipments, not in the plant room equipment. That's right, and uh, that's fine. Uh, we also, and you are you are also one of the manufacturer of the uh, treated fresh air unit. So you will definitely take necessary care for the po post uh, COVID-19 um, uh, requirements. I hope so. Definitely, sir. So, uh, it's only unit is a uh, customized unit, so it can be you know uh, made to the customer's requirement and very well you know in uh, this uh, can be implemented in the air handling units. Yeah. Okay. So now, Richie, as a national president of ISRE and also the task force of the COVID-19, what are the steps to be taken to face the future threat of any similar disaster? Thank you, Marajda. I think <laughs> we have to live with a new normal, uh, which has become a very, you know, very, you know, so-called a very frequently used word, new normal. So what is new normal? So new normal is, you know, nothing that we have COVID and we have to live with COVID. And uh, there are so many viruses India has thought about. What are, I mean, so I, I don't think that should worry us at this time. And, you know, we have to take all precautions. So I, I'm from Mission side, you know, we have formed a task force and I'm happy to see quite a few members of the task force and uh, all of the presidential members here. So, you know, intention is to guide. And uh, in post COVID era, you know, we have to maintain, our, we have to look after the hygiene, which is very important. And I think our honorable prime minister had, a, you know, Swachh Bharat, you know, that that is a yeah. very important point, which, uh, you know, is becoming into play now. So everybody has to really look at Swachh Bharat. So we're talking of hygiene now. We are talking of social protocols. We are talking of washing hand every one or two hours for 20 seconds. We are wearing mask all the time. We have to live with this. This is new normal now. We have to give more importance to fresh air. Dr. Jyotirave also mentioned about fresh air with filters. And we have to that maintain good air changes within the premises where we are sitting in. And uh, recirculation, we have to be very careful in how do we recirculate the air with induction of more of fresh airs. Then cleanliness of our, uh, you know, air conditioning equipment or air vent or air distribution equipment, which is very important. Sanitization of surface. So they are, I mean, to, to bring it short, you know, it is more of uh, Swachh Bharat as a, uh, was a focus where uh, you know this could also come as the hygiene is a very important factor and in hygiene yeah. air conditioning also plays a very vital role uh, this that this is, have, this is what yeah. i would say from Mr. side uh, that is uh, richie what i feel that uh, additional uh, steps uh, will not be there but the steps what has been recommended about what we intend to do that has to be practiced vigorously and we should not there should not be any loose end so that people will bypass that thing, isn't it? Yeah, that is right. In fact, uh, I know Mr. Surika was saying that, you know, the occupancy level is also going to go down. So I, I think, uh, you know, with social distancing and all those kind of things, obviously the uh, occupancy in any area where probably we used to have 100 people sitting now, there will be 40, 30, 40 people sitting. So there, yeah. there are a lot of challenges, but I'm sure we will uh, live through it. I, I, I mean, India is a very... Uh, you know, what do you call uh, fighting? Uh, we, that that we will definitely going to be a success. Yes. For this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, Richie, you. for your this inspiring uh, statements. And now, Suraka, sir, I am asking you one very um, uh, practical question, which is related to you only, that you have got your own office. And what are the various steps you are contemplating for your uh, office premises as a post COVID 19 measure in line with the recommendation and the norm stipulated? Uh, I think it's a very good question. So I will stick only to the air conditioning and the air quality part. Yeah, yeah. I will yeah. not talk about the social distancing, work no, from yes. home, and all the other things. Right. So before opening the office, yesterday we had my administrative team of three people. The first thing I've done is I'm getting an air conditioning contractor tomorrow morning because on my different floors, I have different levels of air conditioning. I have a VRF system. I have a central plant with the ducting system. So I am getting the entire system run, getting it, the offices aired, getting it pest controlled. I don't know for 45 days which new population has moved into my office. I have to get that population out of the office. 
if they are rodents rats that's very common for them to get into ducts mm -hmm. so we are getting the entire uh, before opening my office i've given my office a week 10 days time weeks time to clean up the ducting system clean up all the filters uh, air the offices and make sure that our office is hygienic and since we have limited with vrf and things like that we have limited uh, fresh air intake apart from the social distancing norm which we will follow in the office right. we will open windows okay a, a few windows all around so that there is more intake of fresh air with 45 days of lockdown i'm sure the air outside is much cleaner than it used to be yeah so so these are the few norms so basically getting it pest control getting it the air, first the air quality cleaned before my office guys start joining it get my air conditioning system cleaned all my filters cleaned and then we will get uh, slowly slowly start getting back people into the office true that is a good thing good uh, the thing you have planned and that exactly i wanted to know thank you sir and uh, dr mathur do you feel that COVID-19 crisis is bringing the government, industry, and academic institution closer and working together for the research and development? New guidelines are coming. If yes, then how to initiate the same in the post-COVID-19? I think that is need of uh, the time, need of hour. Uh, we need to work together to find new innovative solutions. And uh, fortunately, we have already uh, started this initiative in ISHRE. We are already uh, talking to Department of Science and Technology, DST, which is the major research funder in our country. We are also having a dialogue with All India Council for Technical Education and other forums. So I would request industry also to come forward. And ISHRE has a research fund which it exclusively uses to carry out research related to industry only. So this is the time when industry can contribute to that research fund of ISHRE, which I promise we will be giving, uh, uh, will be using on priority for ISHRE uh, uh, COVID related solutions. We have a lot of technical groups uh, that are already actively thinking on uh, floating or initiating research projects related to AHU filtration, healthcare especially. So this is how uh, things are going to be and this is the time when all the three legs of uh, technology should come together and work together for future solutions. Thank and I'm sure that with the joining of hands of all these three, it is going to yield a very good result for the future. I'm sh quite sure. Thank you, uh, Jyotin yeah, yeah. Now, Amita, what do you expect any change in clients' expectation in the post-COVID-19? from your experience for handling large projects and customers across all the sectors or segments, you can tell? Yeah, of course. Uh, you see, uh, Mr. Sureka has already answered a lot of that because he's, he, his views are customers' views, so you know what exactly the changes would be. Uh, coming from the perspective of air conditioning, definitely, you know, as uh, they will be expecting from uh, responsible designers and contractors to design the premises or the space uh, more uh, you know apt for these kind of situations because see human resource is one resource which is very very important and you will never like them to fall sick and uh, not come to office and that will be a big waste of your uh, resource so therefore definitely you know the recommendations that has been made in ISHRE uh, uh, COVID guidelines, you know, maintaining of proper temperature, humidity, filtrations, pressurization, is something which we should be uh, doing. And that is what will be the expectation from the customer, that we create a more habitable space in terms of this pandemic. You know, COVID uh, is going to stay. I mean, whether COVID-19 stays or not, Coronavirus, we have seen history tells us that it has come okay, back okay. again and again. Okay. And therefore, thank you, Amit Davo. Thank, you. thank you, Amit Davo. It's a good um, thing you have pointed out. And now, Pratik, in the light of COVID 19 implementation, recommendation of uh, maximum AR, fresh air is taking place. Now, with these new recommendations, do you anticipate 
that any energy level, energy requirement will go go high. If it goes high, how to minimize it? But very shortly you explain, huh? Uh, uh, sure, Minister. Thank you. Because uh, as Amitabha said, any concern raised by Mr. Pradeep Sureka, uh, we can take it as a concern raised by the user community at large. And this was another concern raised by uh, Mr. Pradeep Sureka. Uh, you see, it is true for a tropical country like India, uh, anything between 20 to 40 percent, depending upon the summer or monsoon, which part of the country you belong to, your product is coming up, fresh air constitute that high a percent of the fresh, fresh air, uh, uh, of the total air conditioning load. And definitely it is a huge bill. It, it, it is a huge effect. It has a huge effect on the total energy consumption. However, there are very specific tried and tested design strategies which are already available with us to mitigate the additional energy which comes along with the fresh air. Uh, just to give some few examples, uh, you know, you cannot pump in fresh air into the room. You have to remove the same amount of air from the room, which is cold. So why do you waste that cold air? Use some sort of a heat recovery device, which may be an enthalpy wheel uh, or an energy wheel, so that you capture the cold and dryness of the exhaust air and use it to temper the fresh air. Now, going forward, we can also actually delink the air conditioning load of the fresh air and the load of the inside the building and the envelope load so that we can actually maintain a higher temperature for the cooling medium which is basically the chill water or the dx system the refrigerant for yeah. cooling the load loads and a lower temperature for only say 15 to 20 percent of the fresh air load after we have heat recovered uh, it from the exhaust here. We can also go for demand control ventilation. So, depending upon whether 20 people or 100 people or 200 people, the exact amount of fresh air which is necessary can be pumped into the system. So, these design strategies are very much in place. And yes, uh, it will call for few more additional equipment, a uh, few more additional space, uh, a little bit of more capex. However, considering the health, the uh, life cycle cost and the comfort which it will give uh, to the occupants, I'm sure this is something is going to be uh, new normal uh, going forward. So yes, fresh air can be handled very efficiently without adding to your energy bill. Thank uh, you. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Pratik. And my last question to Shailesh. Do you anticipate the any market shift Demand, demand pattern in the market is likely to be shaped on the event of this COVID-19, uh, post-COVID-19. Uh, sure, sir. Uh, means when uh, the entire world is facing this crisis and, uh, you know, this small uh, invis invisible virus has brought the entire globe on its knees, uh, air conditioning industry is not, uh, you know, untouched. It is also impacted very badly. I would like to, you know, segregate the entire industry in two parts. One is the unitary one where we the room ACs. Uh, we can see the immediate impact. The major part of, you know, summer has gone uh, into this lockdown period and, uh, you know, there is hardly any sale. So uh, this financial year we are seeing for, uh, you know, overall, there is a drop of almost 35 to 40 percent, uh, you know, demand in the market because the focus of the customer is uh, towards health and well-being. So customer uh, would be, you know, looking at this again after maybe in during next season when we have the vaccine available and customers focus will shift back to, you know, these uh, commodities. Uh, while talking uh, to uh, talking about this uh, large uh, uh, spaces which are catered by central plant or uh, VRV systems, which are majorly project uh, project based requirements in the current uh, you know crisis time most of the investors have you know uh, postponed their uh, capex investments uh, so there will be definitely a drop in the uh, office space requirements malls we don't know how, uh, how long they are going to remain closed and uh, moreover uh, you know the new uh, trend work from home virtual meetings, online training, uh, you know, video calling, we are also utilizing that platform, digital platform. 
is going to change the uh, culture and the routine of the working office working and this will also you know uh, lead to the drop in office spaces of uh, the tcs as you know they have declared that today they are 25 30 percent from home that means that means with the post covid you are you are anticipating a lot of of shift of the demand isn't it Yes, and, yes. Uh, and, I'll just take another half a minute to uh, finish. Okay, okay. So please, please. There will be, yeah, there will be a uh, you know drop in office spaces. The current, but going forward, uh, at the same time, there is a huge demand, huge increase in e-commerce. So people are you know shopping online, and a lot of home deliveries are happening. So there will be huge jump in e-commerce business. There will be more companies entering into it. So they will require more warehousing spaces, more office spaces. Third factor, which will you know uh, impact positively, is lot of companies are uh, you know looking uh, to alternative uh, space coming out of China, and India is a very strong contender. So this will also, when we have lot of new companies coming into India, we'll yeah. require lot of manufacturing space, warehousing space, and office space. So immediate impact will be negative, but going forward, we see in a year or two, this will in fact uh, you know go up. And we'll have to be, you know, ready. We should gear up for that. That means you mean to say it is blessing in disguise. Right, sir, for India. <laughs> for India, I'm talking about India. And yes. thank you very much, all the panelists. You have really enlightened us with uh, post-COVID activities. And uh, I really thank you. Everybody thanks everybody. And I thank all the people who has uh, helped uh, from the behind, and we are really very much uh, thankful to everyone. So there are some uh, questions where you would like to quickly take one or two. There are almost hundred questions, but we can I can forward about one or two questions which you can, you can probably you, you give can, to the panelists. You, you can you can tell the one or two directly. Uh, um, okay, there is there is one ask, question huh. uh, coming from Mr. Kamal Sarkar. Uh, uh -huh. All of you must be feeling when we use face mark, we slightly suffocated. Shall then it will be a new normal where airflow speed in the AC premises have to be increased. So he's asking whether the AC flow in the premises needs to be increased with this change of uh, design. I, I, I will direct this question to Dr. Mathur. Yeah, I think uh, that will be a win-win thing. Airflow, if it increases, uh, uh, you will have a better comfort at higher temperature also. So that way, uh, your uh, comfort is uh, reinstated, even if you're using mask. So higher airflow will facilitate more uh, air ingress to the covered covered area of uh, uh, your body, and that will reinstate your comfort. So yes, I think higher airflow is going to be a new normal in our buildings. Thank you. Okay, there, there is another question, which is from Mr. Raza Khan. He is asking, uh, sir, if the set point is 27 to 30 degrees, centigrade recommended then the need for ac will be limited to just few summer months uh, isn't the comfort range 24 to 26 degree please uh, elaborate so he's saying that generally the comfort range is 24 to 26 why are we recommending more than that Pratik, you uh, want, sir? Uh, as i've said the comfort is doesn't depend only upon temperature to a large extent it depends upon the velocity of air around you so, uh, Mr. Rafa, I suggest today itself, you set your AC at 26 or 27 and uh, switch on the fan. And uh, please let us know tomorrow whether you have uh, suffered or comfort uh, because you have not set your set point at 24 or 25. You see, 26 to 27 gives you energy efficiency also. And uh, I think the whole idea is to stay comfort, comfortable and safe. And uh, don't worry about if the use of air conditioner we come down by a couple of hours uh, just because I'm resetting it to 27. I think uh, that should not be the criteria. But uh, the, uh, the, the important thing to uh, realize is it is not only temperature. If you are able to increase air flow around you, you will feel yes. comfortable. Yes, yes. Next. I think, Manoj, no. we have completely run out of time. Uh, okay. I don't know because we are already overshot by almost uh, five minutes. So yeah. I would request uh, I, I you know, the, uh, you, the participants you to the write. Defense. We have yeah. uh, you know uh, uh, email addresses given, so you can definitely write to us, and we will send it to the panelists for answering it, and we will forward the answers to you. Uh, so I would now request 
to give a vote of thanks uh, thank you manoj sir uh, i would first like to thank all the participants for taking time out and uh, participating it has been a overwhelming response that we have received from you thank you very much i would also like to thank uh on behalf of ishray indian chamber of commerce and ashray east india chapter we would we would like to extend our heartiest thanks to the government central government and state government i think they have done a fantastic job in uh containing uh covid in india the health workers the administration personnel and also the facility services uh people you know and every citizen of india for cooperating i would also like to thank uh, icc and particularly mr tapan chatopadhyay because unless uh, he had approached us and initiated this process probably we would not have had this discussion today so uh, a big thanks to mr chatopadhyay icc and the management of icc and ashray east india chapter for also supporting this program i would like to uh, thank the back end uh, support guys who have made this great uh, show uh, possible uh, and also the marketing team of both ishray uh, and icc for uh, you know doing the their bit of job and of course the panelists and the moderators for taking their time out and consenting to participate there's the valuable time and the valuable input they're imparting their knowledge uh, a big thank you from ishray side to all of you and i would now request also the participants to you you can download the covid-19 guidance document from our website www.ishray.in and for any kind of feedback or questions you can write to covid@ishrayhq.in and we shall be glad to answer to your queries thank you very much have a nice day thank you thank, thank you. you thank you thank you thank, thank you, you very much thank you. thank you everybody thank you Close it. Okay. It's right.